Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Ash from Wiley, and I'm your host for today. Welcome and thank you for joining us uh, for the session on Wiley's journals, uh, how they can help researchers, and how to submit your manuscript. So just a few housekeeping items be before we get started. So this session is being recorded. Um, you'll receive an email with a link to the recording as well as a certificate of attendance within the next day or so. So though this session is virtual, but we wanna make it as interactive as possible. So we wanna uh, encourage you to put your questions in the questions box so that we can come to it during the session and then we'll leave time at the end of the session as well. So um, you can also download a copy of this presentation in PDF in the handout uh, pane of your control panel. So without further ado, we've got two speakers today that I'll introduce. First, uh, Fabio Develo. He joined Wiley in March 2021 and is a customer success manager at Wiley, currently focused on training Wiley accounts globally. He has over 20 years of experience as both a sales manager and an implementation manager for top publishers such as Thomson Scientific, Elsevier, and EBSCO. So Fabio is passionate about helping researchers, physicians, librarians, and information specialists make the most out of their available subscribed content and improve research quality and outcomes. And uh, we have got our second speaker, Alison Bell, and she is the journal publishing manager in Wiley's Melbourne office and oversees journals on the health sciences list for the APEC region. So Alison manages the business aspect of the list, direct journal, uh, direct journal strategy, and provides guidance on best practices. So while keeping Wiley Society clients up to date on the trends and developments in scholarly publishing. So through a long career at Wiley, Alison also has experience with the end-to-end -end submission to publication processes, author services, and resources ethical publishing practices in the emerging open access market. So without further ado, uh, over to you, Fabio. Thank you, Ash. I mean, thanks to all of you for joining us today. Um, I'm very excited and you know, very thrilled to um, show you basically uh, the, the whole agenda of our meeting today. So I'm gonna start with showing you what is the Wiley's journal portfolio? I'm going to show you the difference between publishing to a subscription only journal, to hybrid journal, or fully gold open access journal. I will show you the, uh, the advantages of publishing open access, why it is so important for you as a researcher to possibly publish your research in uh, uh, open access. Uh, I will also basically show you uh, how to navigate through the journals in Wine Online Library, how to find very important information uh, regarding the uh, aims and the scope of the journal, how to find the author guidelines that are fundamental when you submit your paper uh, for publication. Um, I will also introduce you to two very important services that will definitely help you um, as, a, as an author. Um, Wiley Author Services and Wiley Editing Services. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you might have, you know, bump into some difficulties that are the typical stumbling blocks that authors encounter while um, publishing their work. So um, I hope that this, you know, uh, two kind of uh, platforms will definitely um, help out uh, uh, in solving the usual problems that authors encounter. And then we have the perhaps most interesting and perhaps most useful um, part of the presentation, which will be covered by Alison, who is an expert in uh, the publication process. And she will share the best uh, advices, the best tips, uh, that you can use in real practice to maximize your success in the entire publication process. And so um, that, that's the plan for today. Obviously, I, I remind all of you the fact that I and Alison will be more than happy 
to receive your questions in the question panel. So please don't hesitate to write any, any comment, any questions, any uh, needs for clarification, any feedback or any idea that you would like to share with us. Uh, we'll be very happy to uh, answer in the Q&A session towards the end of the presentation. Additionally, I, um, you all muted uh, as you probably can see, uh, but if someone of you wishes to talk to myself or Alison, wishes to um, you know, share an experience or ask a question verbally, you can just simply ask to be unmuted by clicking on the attendees uh, tab and clicking on the raised hand icon. So again, you know, uh, we are very, very eager to interact with you and, uh, uh, you know, we value your, your feedback. But before further ado, let's break the ice right now. And I'd like to know something more about you. And if you don't mind, I would, I would like to ask you the following question. So Ash, if you wish, if you want to run the first poll, um, you should be able to see a question on your screen. Um, and the question is, well, obviously I can't see the question, but the question is, uh, have you ever published uh, an article in, a, um, uh, in an open access journal? And you have various options, as you can see, uh, yes, with Wiley or with another publisher in a hybrid journal, or you, you have never published or no, but you are planning to write and, 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 and publish an article and may consider to publish open access. So um, let me see, I mean, 36% of you have already voted. Uh, uh, the, 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 the answers are anonymous, so there's full privacy and there is no right or wrong answer. We just collect this data because I would like to have a more, uh, a more complete picture of your level of experience with the publication process in general. All right. Well, thank you for answering the question. I think now we can close the poll and share the results. So as you can see in your screen, just 4% of you have published with Wiley and 42% with another publisher. No one has ever published in the hybrid journal. 23% never published at all. And 31% of you is considering to write and publish an article uh, in the near future. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for answering. You can hide the poll um, right now. And uh, I think we can now move forward uh, with um, showing you what is the Wiley's journal portfolio. First of all, let me just show you what are the contents that we uh, publish and that we aggregate in our platform called Wiley Online Library. Well, the core element is our journal content, published in partnership with prestigious international scholarly and professional societies. Well, how many journals? Well, so far we publish over 1,600 peer-reviewed journals. We pretty much cover every disciplinary area. We have a huge number of downloads. We're talking about 300 million downloads per year, uh, we are one of the top uh, five publishers in the world. And um, uh, with regard to how these peer review journals break down, I will show you later on a slide that shows you how many gold open access journals we have, how many hybrid journals, and how many subscription journals only we have. But in addition to the journals content, we also um, offer the Wiley back file, which is now spanning uh, three centuries. You can find titles, you know, like over 900 titles that are dating as far back as the 18th century. In addition to the back files, we host the online books and we also combine the online books with uh, over 250 reference works. 
We additionally offer the current protocols and the EBM databases, the evidence-based medicine databases. All of this content is searchable in one single platform. And when you perform your search, you retrieve all of this content. And you obviously can use the filters available in the platform to narrow down your search results. Um, now, let's now get into more details about uh, the options that you have when you want to publish your research findings. Now, you have three options, as you can see in the slides. The most traditional uh, type of journals is the subscription-only journals. Well, these journals, as you know, um, uh, require a subscription in order to be accessed in full. So if you want to read, and download, and share a full text article, you need to either be a subscriber to the journal, or additionally, you need to pay a download fee for the individual article that you wish to share and download. The good thing here is that authors uh, don't need to pay anything. So they are, they are completely free to publish. Now, uh, the, uh, the difference between the subscription-only journals and the hybrid journal is that the hybrid journal allows open access publication. So it's a subscription journal that has a, a double channel. So authors can decide to publish their articles either behind or outside the paywall. And uh, finally, we have the fully gold open access journals. So those journals are not subscription journals. They are free, freely accessible by everyone in the world. Um, everyone can access, download, share, reuse the articles free of charge, uh, but authors are required to pay an APC, an article publication charge, which can normally be paid via an institution's funding or you know, if there is an agreement with Wiley, what, what we call a TA, transformative agreement, this APC can be funded by using the central fund that has been allocated um, through the transformative agreement. So I showed you the link here. You can see the link that will enable you to access the full listing of Wiley Open Access and Wiley Hybrid journals. Uh, how many are there? So uh, we have currently, including, um, uh, including uh, Hinda, we, we have roughly 450 fully gold open access journals, and we have something like 1,200 hybrid journals. We have very few subscription only journals left. Now, when we talk about fully gold open access, just, I just want to remind all of you that despite the majority of fully gold open access journals are basically um, fall into the first category, the first one, the gold open access. Um, and what are the characteristics of the gold open access is that basically you as an author retains the copyright as a matter of fact, the majority of these articles are published under the Creative Commons Attribution License, the CC BY license. But just be aware of the fact that some articles, some open access articles, may be green, may be bronze, or may be diamond. Um, what does it mean, green? Green means that the, uh, the article in, in reality is not published in an open access uh, journal, it's published in a subscription. Uh, journal, but the author decides to self archive a version of the subscription article in an online repository or website. But the, the, the access of the journal is subject to an embargo period, which may vary from 12 up to 24 months. And the author retains the right to use the articles only for certain purposes. Um, Something different occurs for the bronze open access articles. Well, what does it mean, bronze? Bronze means that the article is, again, published in a subscription-only journal, but the publisher, for some reasons, 
decides to make the article free to read for everyone. Okay, it's the publisher's decision. Uh, articles are not formally licensed for use. There's no fee or charge, but the publisher is not under any obligation to keep the article free to read. And finally, the diamond open access articles are fully gold open access articles with no direct overall fees, publishing costs supported by its sponsor. Now, um, once again, I showed you in this slide two links. Well, the first one is the link that will enable you to open up the hybrid open access price list. So you can see for each journal title, what is the APC, the article publication charge. And the second slide here, I have basically showed you the link to download the open access journal price list. And again, for each journal, you can see the APC. And remember that uh, this um, uh, um, file contains both Wiley titles and Hindawi. Okay, I talked about uh, authors retaining the copyright. I talked about uh, publishing um, open access articles using uh, Creative Commons attribution license. Well, the majority, I would say 90% of gold open access articles are published under the top one, the Creative Commons attribution license, so-called CC by license. This is basically the most permissive of licenses. And we recommend using this type of license when you publish your articles. Um, but be aware of the fact that there might be some journals or there might be some mandates from some funders or some grants that might um, offer you or might impose you the selection of other type of CC by licenses. So the second one is called CC by NC, non-commercial, which basically it lets you remix, tweak and build upon your work non-commercially in any format. The third one is called CC by ND, no derivative works. It means that you know you, you are allowed to, to, to copy, redistribute, commercial and non-commercial in any format as long as uh, proper attribution is given. And uh, this license does not permit the distribution of modified material. So you cannot build upon the content, you cannot tweak, you cannot change the content uh, that is being published in, under this license. And finally, the fourth one is CC by and C and D, which is basically the combination of the second and the third one. And as you could probably uh, infer, that's the most restrictive of licenses available. All right, I don't need to convince you about uh, the advantages of publishing open access, but this slide is showing you just the outcome of uh, an analysis that we conducted at Wiley using four years of publication data. We wanted to ascertain um, what is the increase in visibility in downloads and citations in automatic attention of publish, you know, of articles published open access versus articles published in subscription only journals and obviously you can see that uh, you know publishing open access attracts far more downloads 300 percent more downloads 200 percent more citations and nearly five times more altmetric attention score so uh, it is obvious uh, to, to 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 understand uh, that um, the impact on the not only on the research community but on the entire world of your articles uh, that you are about to publish will increase dramatically. Um, I will now just um, stop for a second. And in the last 10 minutes available, I'd like to swap and change the screen. In the meantime, I'm giving you 10 seconds break uh, to check the questions. Uh, in the meantime, I'm connecting to the one online library. 
I would like to ask you whether there is any question so far, any uh, request for further clarification, um, any feedback. No, nothing so far. <laughs> okay. So, um, Ash, can you see the landing page of Wider Online Library? Uh, yes, I can. Excellent. Okay. So, just to give you an example, um, that's Wider Online Library that hosts all of our content. Uh, let's imagine that you want to publish your article in the Journal of Neuroscience Research. All right, so let's get straight into the journal of neuroscience research. When you access the journal, you'll be able to see very important information on the journal impact factor here, the JCR comparative. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to see the most recent articles and the most cited articles in these journals. And by the way, look at here. The re most recent articles in this subscription journal, obviously this uh, journal is hybrid, and we can see that it is hybrid because some uh, journal articles are published open access, some other journals are published in subscription only mode. Full access means that you can only have a, a, a access if you have a subscription to the journal. So, this is just to show you that um, many articles are being published open access in the hybrid journal. And this is because uh, obviously everyone can read the article, everyone can cite, mention on the social media, on the blogs and everywhere. So and therefore, obviously it is quite advantageous to, to uh, take uh, this opportunity of publishing open access in the hybrid journals. So uh, imagine that you want to actually write and publish an article in the, Neuros in the Journal of Neuroscience Research. The first thing you should do is to click on About, click on Overview. And in the Overview section, the first thing that appears is the aims and the scope. That's very important because you need to make sure that the aims and the scope of your article matches the aims and the scope of the journal. You don't want to run the risk to be rejected just because your, uh, your article uh, doesn't match the end of the scope. The second thing that I advise you to do is to click on the contribute section and click on the author guidelines. So the author guidelines are very important um, you know, requirements that is basically that needs to be respected in full. So if you scroll down, you'll be able to see uh, all the requirements that your paper must follow in order to be accepted for publication. So you'll see how um, the title must be written, you know, how the figures must be formatted, um, the number of pages, the maximum number of pages uh, for each section and so on. So basically be sure that uh, when you write your paper, you basically follow these guidelines. And, and again, if you have any issues uh, or if you uh, need any help uh, uh, while writing and you know, making sure that uh, you know, the editing and the formatting is, is, is perfect, please do uh, use our services. What are, what are the services that, that, that we make available? So. First of all, I'm just now um, going back to the presentation. I don't know if you can see the presentation now. The first one is called Wiley Author Services. It's completely free of charge. That's the URL address. And you can see here there are different resources here that you can use. The first one is called Finding journal finder journal finder is a software that will enable you to upload the title of your manuscript and the abstract and the software will retrieve the best journal title that match the aims and scope of your article 
it's an advantage, you know, it, it, I hope that's useful because finding the right journal to submit your paper is not an easy task. And also, you also have um, other useful tools like the promotional toolkits for authors. So when you publish your article, you want to maximize uh, visibility and you can use the toolkits here to actually increase the visibility. Or uh, if you intend to publish your article open access, you have everything you need to know about open access publication and so on. Um, you also have your article dashboard. So when you submit your article or when you publish your article, you can access your dashboard uh, whereby you can manage all of the articles that you are about to publish or that you have submitted. And you also have the possibility to view the detailed production track line, uh, sorry, tracking timeline, uh, or you can actually uh, make payments for open access and so on. Uh, that's the screenshot of the journal finder I talked to you about. That's still in beta, but it's free of charge. Nothing uh, is required to, to be paid. And uh, uh, in addition to that, we also provide uh, the author guides manuscript preparation, submission of peer review, licensing, and so on. So you have a, a lot of uh, content that contains actionable knowledge that you can use for uh, writing and publishing your um, paper. And finally, we have expert webinars on a broad range of publishing topics, like for instance, how to get published, or for instance, understanding the peer review process, and so on. Um, the other, sorry, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, the second service that we offer, and this time this is not free of charge, this is for fee. It's a high level professional um, services made by experts in the publishing area. It's called Wiley Editing Services. This is the URL address. And what we offer is article preparation services, like for instance, English language editing, academic translation. Um, we help you format the figures, the, we help you create graphical abstract design, or we help you format your manuscript to make sure that there are no mistakes, no errors, and that uh, you know, uh, helping you to increase the likelihood of your work to be accepted for publication. And um, uh, and that's it. Basically, this um, um, service, of course, the uh, Bali Editing Services, uh, offers you uh, placeable, orderable on, uh, orders online. So you can view the type of service, you can upload your manuscript, and you can basically calculate the price real time and place you know, an order. All right, so we have seen a lot of uh, information here. We have seen how Wiley can help authors in being successful uh, and what are the resources, on, the online resources that are available. Now, um, I would say that it is time for a break. And before handing over to uh, Alison for her, publication tips presentation, I'd like to check the question panel and uh, check whether there is any specific question so far. Um, I can see a question from Abdul Kaber Kazi. Um, the question is, are there any discounts for APC for uh, developing countries? Um, uh, all right. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert in the pricing policies. Um, I need to get back to you, but let me just check with uh, Hash or Allison if uh, you know more about me. I can answer that, Fabio. Um, we do have uh, APC waivers and and or discounts available for certain uh, regions globally. There's a list of those regions that uh, uh, appears on the Wiley um, uh, website. So I would encourage you, we partner with uh, a group called Research for Life that we um, use 
um, the recommendations of those uh, countries that are eligible for those waivers or discounts. So that information is available um, on the Wiley website. Well, thank you, Alison. Um, Fabio, uh, I see a slide, but then it has got your notes on it as well. So oh, maybe... sorry, so sorry. Um, so sorry. Yes. I need to. <laughs> yes. I need to basically change screen yeah. again. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I woke up too early this morning, so uh, <laughs> I still I need some more coffee. <laughs> sure. It's basically it's seven o'clock in the morning where I am right now. So um, now let me see if you see the second screen. I am now just opening up the uh, presentation. Can you see this, the, yes. uh, the presentation? Yep. Okay, great. Bye Thank now. you. Okay, thanks Fabio. I'll um, take it from here. So um, welcome everybody. Uh, just to let you know, I suppose I, the first disclaimer I need to say, well, the only disclaimer is that I actually have not myself ever written a manuscript, but I have worked as an editorial assistant for over 15 years uh, with Blackwell and, and then Wiley. Um, so I, I, in that role, I have seen a lot of submitted papers, I've worked with a lot of different editors and I've supported a lot of reviewers in the whole peer review journey as well as authors as well. So I've had quite a lot of experience about what goes on sort of behind the curtain uh, of peer review once you submit your paper. But um, so I'll take you through some tips on manuscript preparation, also what to expect in peer review. Um, particularly as a number of you from the poll showed that you had not uh, submitted to uh, a manuscript uh, before. And then I'll also just touch on uh, some tips on promoting your work because a lot of authors, um, once they're accepted, and that's no, no small feat, um, think that that's the end of the journey, but it's, it's not. Um, we encourage authors to then, once their paper has successfully been published, then take ownership of promoting uh, that work and ensuring that uh, you know the, the reach is extended as far and wide as possible. And you're able to do that in a number of ways, so I'll take you through that. So if I could just get the next slide, please. Thank you. And the next one. So why uh, publish and what to expect? And I'll need you to click on the uh, the text to come on. Just keep clicking through, Fabio. Um, so it's Alison, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Alison, just a quick one. There's a question that come in. Um, yes. Can an independent researcher publish in Wiley? So I'll leave you to answer where relevant you know, if you're going to come to that point, yeah, but I thought I'd just let you know there's a question in there. Okay, um, well, look, I can just address that quickly. So when you're saying an independent researcher, if we're just talking, um, uh, yes, um, you are able to publish in a Wiley, Wiley journal. There's no uh, restriction there, as Fabio went through the different journal types that are available to you. So fully gold open access, a hybrid title, which publishes both subscription model um, and open access. Um, but uh, yes, independent researchers certainly are, are, are able to publish in a Wiley uh, journal. Um, so why publish? So uh, look, and what I'll do is we, we've, we want to leave some questions for time at the end. So I will move through these uh, slides uh, quite quickly. Um, there's quite a lot of information that is there, so I won't touch on every single bullet point that is there, but I'll pull out the main the main points, and of course, um, as Fabio mentioned, the, the full presentation is available uh, to you so, to, to to access. So you can always go back and go through the the, the detail as needed. So we've got a few um, reasons listed here about why to publish. So fame, recognition by peers, uh, promotions or grant applications, it may be a requirement uh, as far as advancing your career in that way. Establish precedence, so um, you know, establishing uh, an understanding, a new, a new um, understanding within the research literature, which then can be built on uh, with, with further research and, and further publications. Uh, a responsibility around the fact that, that some of this, and a lot of this research is funded by uh, taxpayers. 
Um, and it just mentions there on the right, if your research does not generate papers, it might just as well not have been done. So obviously, um, once your paper is, is published, uh, the downloads, um, the citations, the citation rate of the journal uh, of the uh, article also uh, gives an you know gives an indicator of uh, the impact of of your research. Um, and it just mentions there also papers provide the shoulders that others can stand on. So you know research, uh, the publication of research leads to um, more further discussion um, around that research and, and development in, in the findings uh, and the results and the conclusions uh, as time moves on and techniques and, and you know all those things progress. Uh, next slide please. So why journals? So uh, journals provide um, a, an excellent uh, a opportunity to formalise uh, uh, the, the research that you've conducted and then reported on. Um, journals provide a, a quality control a mechanism via peer review. So the fact that your paper has been validated through that, um, that process uh, you know, journals provide that service to, to their authorship um, by their editors and reviewers. So it's that quality control to understand that a paper, it's, its association with that journal means that it's been validated and assessed as part of the, the submission and publication process with that journal. Uh, dissemination, so of course, we've got all of our journals online. Um, we used to have journals in print and now we have so, still some journals in print, but of course, um, we're moving away from that with uh, journals uh, now uh, taking up the online space and there is just more and more research being published online. Um, and of course that, uh, you know, that in itself enables it to be shared um, and accessed uh, on, a, on a far greater basis than, than if it was a, a, a print journal that was sitting on a library shelf. Archiving, so of course in, in that uh, online space, um, or in a hard copy space that provides a, a formal version of record. Um, and as I mentioned, the, increasing the discoverability, uh, journals, the reputation of a journal, uh, the reputation of the publisher that publishes the journal um, and uh, you know, provides a, a level of gravitas um, to the, the publications that it, the, the journal features. And um, we, we understand from, um, our, the, the data that we collect that most authors are popping in keywords into uh, search engines and that's how they discover um, the, the research that they want to read and interact with. Next slide please. Okay, so there's a couple of um, examples there of article types. So original research articles and review articles, they they make up the I suppose the the, the bigger categories of of research content that features in journals. Um, we also know that review articles tend to be cited a lot more uh, than other article types, um, but it depends. The article types that uh, a, a journal publishes really uh, it can be quite it can be very varied, and it can also be determined by the subject area as well. Um, health science titles will have different article types than, say, a social sciences or humanities uh, journal will feature. Um, Fabio mentioned about the author guidelines when he did the demonstration of the. Wiley Online Library page. So um, the best thing to do to find out what article types are available to you in submitting to a journal is to have a look at the author guidelines and you'll get all of the information, article types and the descriptions and requirements for those article types. Next slide, please. Next, next slide. Ash, do we have a, oh, here we go. Nope, don't have a technical problem, here we are. Okay, uh, where to publish? So how do you decide which journal is the most appropriate for your research? And I would stress that journal impact factor is not everything. Um, 
it, it can be a consideration, but of course we also know from from um, you know information that we've gathered from our authors that authors look at an array of uh, metrics and also reasons um, why they will choose one journal over another. Of course, subject and scope are integral uh, to the uh, choosing the journal that's right for uh, your research. Um, but also uh, author services around um, quality and speed in peer review. I know authors will often um, select to or opt to submit to a journal that they know they're going to have um, uh, have a, 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 a good experience in, during the peer review process and a timely experience uh, in, the, in the peer review process. Um, so who do you want to reach uh, with the publication and who can you reach with the publication? Is it an international journal? Is it a, a more localised journal that features more localised content? So matching, matching, um, sorry, animal in the house. Um, so matching a, a, a journal with um, matching a journal with uh, the audience that you're tr trying to reach um, and the, the the audience that the um, journal is trying to reach. Sorry, just got a bit distracted there. Um, so um, you can also look at where do you read uh, papers related to your research and which do you uh, like the most. So what do you wh where do you tend to read? Um, uh, and that gives an indicator of where your interest, you know, your interest lies. Um, as I mentioned, what is the scope of the candidate journal, and who reads your candidate journal? You could ask your peers. You could look in social media. Where, uh, who are your peers um, uh, talking about on social media or uh, with altmetric scores? What have you? So there's a there's a number of ways that you can you can find out um, uh, who and where. The, the, the journal articles um, are being talked about. Next uh, slide, please. Okay, where to submit. So Fabio touched on, oh, we've just skipped over that, but um, Fabio touched on a number of those points. Are we able to go back? Uh, so what is the journal's copyright policy and that will also be determined by what type of journal it is, whether it's a hybrid journal, um, a, a publishing subscription uh, a content or and open access content. Hi subscription content has a different copyright um, and license to uh, open access content. Uh, is it a subscription based or open access uh, journal as mentioned? Um, how fast is the submission to publication time? So submission to um, acceptance and then acceptance to publication. So not only do you want speed in peer review, you do want speed to publication as well. Once your paper's published, you want it out there as quickly as possible. So it can be download, downloaded, shared, cited um, and, and promoted um, on social media. Uh, does the journal allow you to comply with your funders' mandates? Uh, so the um, some the policies that certain journals have, you'll be required to make sure that they uh, are in line with the funders' expectations and mandates. Um, Wiley does have information regarding funder mandates um, and how each journal does or does not comply with certain funders that is available on the uh, Wiley website. And a very important point is do not submit to several journals at the same time. Um, there is actually a question in the submission state, stages where you have to declare that you have not submitted your paper to another journal. You are allowed to submit your paper um, once, once you've had a decision rendered. If it has not been accepted for publication in one journal, you can submit it to another but um, you cannot submit to two journals at the same time. That's called dual uh, submission and that is not allowed. Next slide, please. Uh, beware of predatory journals. So um, I will keep moving because we want to leave some time for questions, um, but predatory journals have become quite prevalent with the introduction of uh, open access um, and Unfortunately, with uh, predatory journals, one of the issues with them is once you have published in a predatory journal who often position themselves 
to seem like a legitimate publication. They may even use branding or a title that is similar to a well-known, reputable journal. Um, once you've published in a predatory journal, you cannot you cannot take that back. The, the, the paper will, will be forever published in the predatory journal. So I would encourage you to use the resources there to check that the uh, journal that you're going to be um, submitting to is not uh, the predatory kind. Next slide, please. Okay, what to expect in this process? Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, I've worked with uh, I've worked across a lot of journals with a lot of authors, a lot of reviewers, and a lot of editors. And uh, there is this is very true. There is no universal formula because there is such variety um, in different uh, disciplines, and there's different standards. In, in different editors have different standards as well and expectations. Next slide, please. So. Um, at the time you come to submission, so submissions are made via the journal's online submission system and Wiley has, um, uh, uh, provides that via a Scholar One editorial manager or our emerging um, submission platform Research Exchange, which makes the whole process a lot quicker and a lot easier. So we're rolling that out across our portfolio. Um, as I mentioned, uh, authors, um, are required to declare that they haven't submitted the paper to another journal at the same time, and there'll be other other uh, submission questions that you'll be required to uh, complete. Uh, luckily, Research Exchange uses uh, AI technology, um, so it uh, takes a lot of the information from your manuscript Word document and it pre-populates the information for you in the submission process. So um, takes a lot of the work of free format typing uh, out out of the whole process. Um, you may uh, have the opportunity to provide a cover letter and your author guidelines will outline what you should provide in that cover letter. And the manuscripts will go through an initial checklist by an administrative assistant to make sure it's uh, compliant with the author guidelines, such thing as um, the structure of the, the uh, manuscript, adherence to word limits, um, that there's uh, the proper declarations around perhaps ethical uh, ethics uh, compliance, uh, funding statements, those sorts of things. So there'll be an administrative check to make sure that all elements of the paper are uh, present before it, uh, it goes to the Editor-in-Chief for consideration. We also use a tool called Authenticate, which um, does a text overlap analysis to um, see if the submitted manuscript has a unduly high amount of overlap, text overlap with previously published works. Next slide, please. So what are editors looking for? So uh, all journals, they're looking for adherence to scope, uh, that the format um, uh, meets their author guidelines for particular article types, that you can understand the paper. Don't make it difficult for uh, the editor to understand what you're trying to say and a compliance to guidelines and ethical behaviour. Um, uh, some journals have a very heavy uh, research-based article um, uh, articles that are published, so reviews and uh, uh, original articles, as I mentioned. Others uh, have a lot of more editorial type articles, so commentaries, opinions, letters to the editor, editorials. So journals will have, have uh, uh, typically an array of both of those. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the peer review process. So it lists there um, what it should do and what it cannot do. And it's important to say what it ca cannot do there and it's the asterisk saying um, automatically. So it's a critical assessment of manuscripts submitted to journals by experts who are not part of the editorial staff. So the reviewers are external independent reviewers. Um, and it is their job to assess uh, uh, the, the merit of the article that's been submitted, whether it um, adds to the research literature, um, although the, the whether it is suitable for the journal as far as subject and scope 
and quality, a general quality of submission, they, the editor-in-chief will have done an initial check before uh, it passes on to the reviewers. So that just um, this just outlines what uh, what what usually uh, comes out um, in the whole peer review process. Um, it it um, won't necessarily detect fabrication or prevent duplicate publication, um, but often those um, sorts of practices are picked up in the research community because once a paper is is published, there's lots of eyes that are looking onto it. And reviewers actually review from journal to journal as well. So sometimes they they pick up on papers that have been, say, duly submitted. They've, it's been submitted to two journals at the same time, and a reviewer will identify that they were asked to review it at one journal, and it, had, and it appears suddenly in another journal that they've been asked to review as well. Next slide, please. Now we're going to have to speed this up. So this is the uh, peer review process. I won't go through this because um, it will be more complicated me trying to describe this infographic, but I would encourage you to um, take a look at the slides after this presentation and the, the, the workflow will make sense to you in your own time. Next slide, please. Okay, the most common uh, peer review types, so single anonymized, so that's where reviewers know the identity of the authors. Double anonymized, that's where reviewers don't know the authors, authors don't know the reviewers. And then there's open peer review, which is the least common, uh, where everybody knows everybody. Um, there, is a, there is a bit of a push for, it's a slow, slow moving push, but there is a push for um, peer review processes to become, become more transparent. And so with that transparency, um, uh, no anonymization around reviewers and authors, but that is a slow, slow moving process. But you'll find that most um, uh, uh, journals fall within the, the, the first category, single anonymized. Next um, slide, please. Let's stick, no, let's move on to the next slide, I think, because I think we'll have to skip a few to get through. So next slide, please. Okay, accept, reject, or revise. So these are the three outcomes that you'll typically um, receive um, when you submit to a journal. It may be a rejection uh, without external referee reports. As I said, the editor may make an initial uh, decision uh, immediately at a submission whether the paper uh, should progress to peer review. The sheer volume of, of manuscripts that are submitted means that the editor has to do what we refer to as triaging, so make a judgment call uh, whether the uh, paper gets through that first gate of uh, to, to then um, uh, progress to the peer review stages. Or a rejection may be based on a paper that has gone through that stage um, and been evaluated by reviewers but has not been successful. A lot, a lot of journals, a lot of articles, my apologies, will undergo a form of revision. So reviewer reports are provided to the authors, the authors revise and resubmit for further consideration. And then of course we have um, acceptance. So that may be without changes, that's rare. That might be for things like editorials and letters. Um, but uh, if you're asked to complete minor uh, revisions, Often, not always, and there's no guarantee, but often um, you may find that a minor revision decision, if you adhere to the re requirements of that revision, um, you may then have your paper accepted. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, so uh, when revising, um, I think, look, the bullet points are there are going to speak for themselves when you go back and have a look at this presentation. But um, the uh, the main thing that I would say that when you're revising is to make sure that you address all of the reviewers' comments, whether or not you have incorporated those um, changes, those suggested changes, or whether you have justification as to not doing that. You need to be very, very clear. I have seen over my time as an editorial assistant so many revised papers push back to the authors because they haven't put the effort in for their revision and providing a revision letter that outlines the changes that they've made to their paper. Don't make it difficult for the editor or for the reviewers to understand the changes that you've made. It won't, um, it won't work in your favour for them wanting to reassess your paper. Next slide please. 
Okay, and rejection is not the end of the world. In fact, most um, researchers have experienced rejection and it doesn't matter. Um, you may very well in, with your first submission uh, experience a rejection and it may be an immediate rejection. Don't be disheartened. That is the nature of the beast. That is how peer review, <coughs> pardon me, often works. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter how experienced you are. I know um, I know uh, an editor in chief of one of our own journals that has recently you know had a, um, a paper uh, uh, rejected. So it doesn't matter at what level or what stage of your career you are or your experience or expertise, rejection is part of the process. Next slide. Okay. Now I think I'm going to have to push through these writing tips because they are actually quite self-explanatory. Um, so uh, Fabio, if you want to just um, push through these slides, because um, we've come almost to the end of the session, this gives you, um, basically these slides give you a good understanding um, of how to structure your paper. And if we leave it back at, Sorry, just go back one to promoting one's work. Okay, so the it, the slides there that we just had to push through, they actually uh, covered things like the typical structure for an original research article, which is one of the main article types, as I mentioned. But your author guidelines is going to give you a summary of how you should format and structure particular artic article types, depending on which journal you're submitting to. It also gives you... Um, tips on how to uh, maximise um, the discoverability of your the discoverability of your paper by using your title, your keywords and also your abstract and structuring those and using those um, to ensure that it's called um, search engine op optimization. So as I mentioned a lot of uh, readers are using the internet to obviously find, discover research, they pop in keywords and the search results come up. You want to ensure that you're making your article as discoverable in that online, in the, you know, the online ether um, as much as possible. So um, please uh, take note of those, those structural, um, structural uh, suggestions as well. Um, <clears throat> there is also touching on publication uh, ethics and things like plagiarism, duplicate publication. So we, I talked about duplicate submission where you, you submit to two journals at the same time. Uh, duplicate publication is also um, publishing in two different journals at the same time, which you're not allowed to do unless you have the proper uh, copyright um, approvals that are pre-arranged. Um, but uh, another thing is improper or non-existent attribution to previously published work. So plagiarism in that you've actually taken uh, reference somebody else's work, but you haven't included them in your citations or your reference list. Now, um, as I mentioned, once your paper is accepted, um, the, uh, uh, the next important step of the journey is to make sure that you promote your work as widely as possible. As Fabio mentioned, open access um, supports uh, you know, greater access and reuse of uh, articles due to the nature of the CCBY licenses that are, are applicable to open access publication. Uh, just next slide, please, Fabio. Next slide, please. Okay, um, promoting your work, there, there is a guideline uh, on the Wiley website uh, and there is a link uh, within this presentation which actually uh, you, takes you through and there's a PDF summary which tells you how you can share your article so um, whether it's open access or whether it is subscription and subject to a copyright, um, there you do still have options to share your article. This uh, PDF I mentioned, it gives a great summary of uh, the different uh, publication models, whether it's open access or subscription and how and where you can share your article with um, keeping within those license uh, rules. Um, it also provides uh, uh, suggestions on where 
to share uh, your paper. So sharing at conferences, sharing with um, uh, colleagues, sharing on social media, um, uh, and uh, this article share um, option is available to authors. So when you publish your paper, you're offered a shareable link um, that you can uh, distribute as far and wide as possible. And the recipient of those that link um, gets uh, unlimited access to the journal, regardless of whether it's subscription model or whether they have paywall access or what have you. Uh, next slide, and we are nearly finished. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, look, I think we're, we, we are at the end of the session, so I think that we should see if there are any questions. Ash, if you'd like to uh, read out any questions or Fabio, um, I'm happy to take uh, some and we can, as I mentioned, the slides are going to be available for um, all participants. So please go back and drill down on the detail that I wasn't able to cover today. Yes, Alison, I, uh, and also I would like to remind all of the attendees that they will receive an email within 24 hours containing the link to the recorded session, as well as a certificate of attendance. And there are a couple of questions who went through. Um, one who could be interesting to share. Uh, up to what percentage of plagiarism do Wiley journals accept while submitting an article? This is coming from Rabjit. Oh, okay. Um, while the plagiarism tool does provide a, a score, a percentage, um, as an indicator of the amount of text overlap, it's important to understand that the detection of text overlap is not the same necessarily as the detection of plagiarism. So plagiarism, there is intent behind um, you know, there's purpose, there's um, intent behind plagiarism. It may be that an author hasn't properly um, uh, cited a, a, a paper, for example, and that's why there's a lot of text overlap and it's being picked up. The point I'm making is that there's no um, set number. We don't, um, we don't recommend that there is a set percentage that is okay and a set percentage, anything above that is not okay. We use that percentage indicator as a, uh, uh, to, to flag, I suppose, whether there needs to be further review and investigation as to whether plagiarism has occurred. So uh, it's not really that there's a safe level, if you know what I mean. Well, thank you, Alison. Um, I can see no further questions coming through. Uh, and we um, are running out of time. I think, um, you know, it's been, uh, uh, Alison, a very thorough and interesting presentation. And um, as I said, I mean, uh, all of the attendees will be able to actually read through the details of the content, the, of the slides that we have assembled. And um, I wish all of the attendees uh, Great success with uh, your work, your publication, your future publications. And I uh, look forward again to seeing you uh, in some other uh, trainings that we regularly organize for our course. And I would also like to thank Ash for being with us today and running the event. And um, and uh, so I am now going to close the session and um, wish all of you a nice rest of the day. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Fabia and Alison, for sharing so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.